Mr. Truck, I could not be more excited today. Why are you excited today? <laughs> I'm excited because we have our long-term Ram 2500 Cummins turbo diesel heavy duty truck and we're towing with a fifth wheel camping trailer. Oh, it's a nice one too. It's a toy hauler. Yes, I love toy hauler. But, but it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. So in this video, how about we do this? This is a short bed Ram heavy duty. And here's the question I have. Is it okay or will it fit? Will the trailer match the truck? Well, maybe this has a long extension on the fifth wheel. We'll find out if that kingpin's gonna work. All right, so we'll show you the truck. We'll show you this beautiful ATC trailer and we'll show you how to match your fifth wheel to your truck. So let's get going. This is the truck we're towing with today. It's a 2022 Ram 2500 crew cab with a six foot four inch bed, also called a short bed or a standard bed. Under the hood of this one is a standard rated 370 horsepower, 850 pound feet of torque, 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel. This truck is a four x four and it's rated um, to tow up to 20,000 pounds. And we have a Mopar accessory, 30,000 pound fifth wheel hitch on the back of it. And Mr. Truck will tell you about the trailer. The trailer we're towing today is a really cool toy hauler. It's a Game Changer Pro Series by ATC. Now it's like 36 feet long, 12 feet tall, and loaded is over eight is over 16,000 pounds. Those are 8,000 pound axles, which you only see in the RV industry. I wish they had them in the horse industry. Great axles to have for weight. And this will haul a lot of toys, but it's got gas, it's got everything uh, on board to fill up your ATVs and all the stuff that you're doing. Okay, but Mr. Truck, here's what I'm worried about, right? So we have a shorter bed, heavy duty truck. So let's go measure and maybe see how it fits. And let's talk about the neck and also the frame of the trailer. Okay. So I already mentioned that we're using a Mopar accessory uh, fifth wheel hitch. It's right. overrated for this job. Well, I, got, I got the biggest one possible. It's good to be overrated. Okay. Now this has that Rotoflex, which is kind of unusual. It's a Kurt, it's an extension. So this I'm sure will fit everywhere we're going to measure this, but that was supposed to swivel with the trailer and they also swivel that fifth wheel by itself swivels forward and back and side to side. So that's, uh, I, I call it unnecessary, but it's not my choice. Okay, but this trailer is all aluminum frame. It is, and look at the framework under here. I've never seen one quite built this well. I mean, horse traders, then they're aluminum. They go crazy on framing and then they have big wing gussets and big wing gussets on the gooseneck and all that. And this is built heavier than most horse traders. And I've seen some big horse traders. I like the way they did this. This way, it's not, you know, just a bunch of, of uh, sheet metal framing that goes down in the front. Yeah. Like some traders, this is actually made this, solid. It's made for load. This is a premium trailer. It is, I uh, like it. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about the axle placement and take a look at that. Well, sure. Now, this is, uh, this is the way I would set up a trader. I call them Dexter rules. If you look at the owner's manual on Dexter axles, which comes with most traders that they're on, they want you to have the axles two-thirds from the front of the trailer, one-third from the back. And that usually gets you the right balance. And there's a lot of different configurations of that. And this one also has like a spreader axle. There's a little further apart, so you get a little bit of weight distribution. But it's all designed to hold weight in the back, just like a living quarters horse trailer is. This will take those big loads. All right, let's get to, the, to business here. Well, Andre, are you a doctor? What's these latex gloves for? <laughs> I'm not going to be backing up near you anytime soon. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. So uh, whenever we tow on the eye gauntlet together, right? Yeah. You, you always tell me, you know, grease your hitches. Grease the balls is grease, what I grease, say. grease the ball, right. So I brought lots of grease because I wanted to grease this fifth wheel. Am I doing it correctly? Well, you can do it that way, but I, I, I think these little donuts are really cool. You just slap that on there and forget about being greasy. But if you want to do that manual labor, I'm here for you, buddy. I just don't uh, back up near you anytime uh, soon with grease and latex gloves. Okay. You worry me. Okay. okay, no, no. So let's use this instead. All right, Mr. Truck, I, I like... Watch your head. Watch your head. I like that um, we don't have to get too greasy today. So let's just use this disc. Does it just hang here? Yeah, let's see. Okay. Because I don't know if you can get it up past the top one. 
That would be nice to have it clear out of the way. There, there we go. That's where it goes. There it is. You're on top of things. Okay, so now I need to unlock my jaw, right? Yeah, climb on up there and unlock your jaw. <laughs> oh, that's pretty easy. Wow, it's okay. much better than it was. So I set this fifth wheel hitch when I was putting it together. I set it at about medium height. Okay. okay? Because you see, it has height adjustable holes. Right. So you can really, I mean, you could lift it up or you can lower it down, depending on your truck, your bed configuration. You know, some trucks have higher bed sides. That's true. Right? They, most of these are 19 inches. They so what do you think? A out there. Now, Should did we you get measure some... all this so you know that that's the right height? This well, I didn't know which trailer I was going to use. Okay, because that looks like it's a little high to me. Okay, well, but we'll so know when we hook it up and we'll look know. at the axles. Yeah. yeah, we'll know how much the gaps we have. So should I try to back up? Yeah, let me lift up the trader a little more. Okay, let, power let's, jacks. I let, love power let, jacks. Let me show that. Okay, I'm gonna push both buttons at the same time. There's one for each jack. It's an equalizer system. I like these. Okay, that's a little high. I think that's high. Okay. Because you know, sim wise, they back up and lift up the trader when they hit them because the trader brakes are locked. I'm not sure that that's how you want to do it here, but you tell me what to do. Okay. So I think technically there should be a maybe less of a gap between the plate of the trailer and the plate of the fifth wheel right right so let me back up slowly and you uh, adjust the height of it yeah the thing to remember is you look at these jacks i mean these are good jacks or equalizer jacks but if you were to back up and hit it hard you would bend something off those jacks well i don't want to this is a very premium exactly trailer. and like a horse trader made like heavy duty jacks but rvs are made out of real light jacks yes let's Plug in the seven pin, right? Right. I mean, you're not connected or anything, but I worry about RV jacks because I know how they're made. So I thought if we plug this in, and if you're really coordinated and can do multiple tasking, you might want to hit the trailer brakes while you're backing up, when you get close to backing up. Yeah. And that way, we're not going to bend these jacks or anything. I just, I always worry about RV jacks. And also, technically, uh, we should probably remove the uh, tailgate, but right now we have space yeah i think you got enough room if you look at how far the kingpin is from the fifth wheel yeah. and measure how far it is from here to the trader we should be able to go all the way but to get on the highway it might be smart to remove this right no why it's an extra project to do but if you turn corners the tailgate's going to be clear up there okay and then you know it's not going to hold your trader if it connects you know so i don't know why you would take it off but you can do whatever you want Mr. Truck, so first measurement I want to do from the cab towards the uh, front of the trailer. You're just a hair under 50 inches, or did you see that? So that's about four feet, right? Well, it's three feet. Right here. Oh, that's four feet. Yeah, my God, I'm looking at 130 inches. So yeah, that would be... Uh... So that's, so we need to make uh, maybe a little turn and see how it turns. But let's talk about uh, the distance between the bed rail and the top of and the bottom of the trailer yeah and that's it a lot of things are in parallel when you look at your trailer does it look parallel to the ground same way with your bed to the bed rail or your neck of your trailer to the bed rail you want that to be pretty parallel and it's pretty good it's going downhill just a hair but this is what's really important is to see how high it is up to the frame you got you got a full nine inches yeah full nine inches and that's, that's that's what he said yeah that's what she said and nine inches is great that's actually unusual because most of these are like six inches yeah. some of them are four inches but you go through a dip you go to vegas or, or side get, to side yeah, there's a lot of places where there's dips and rails especially like las vegas and you'll get this real close and you'll hit your bed rail this is plenty of clearance you can go off road with this puppy this is good you did good andre and that's what 17 inches so 17 in the front to this gravel road yeah Okay, a little chuck in the back. And I'm assuming it's parallel because see, it's parallel to the front axle and looks like it goes up. Yeah, so, so let's measure here. Yeah. Of course, it's not perfectly level ground either. No, it's not. That's 19, so I think it's going up. Let's see if we can go up here where the bend is, where it makes this little... What it's is... about 19. 19, so... Okay. Well, let's get it on the highway maybe and uh, measure let it me, again. Let, let me measure right here too, because this front part is pretty, pretty parallel, pretty level. That's, That's about, about 18. 18. So we're about an inch low in the front. So it's going downhill slightly. Right, and see too, this is a toy hauler. 
So after you load the back, full of your ATVs, your Razors, your all Jeeps. that stuff. My Jeeps. Your Jeep, put your Jeep in the back, then the back's gonna go down a little bit because I imagine the end of the garage is probably somewhere around here. Yeah. So that's uh, that's good because you're always gonna be a little higher tongue weight without a load on this kind of a trailer. And then you get the, the ballast in the back, your toys, then it levels out and you get the right tongue weight. Now it's all about safety, so let's connect the breakaway cable, uh, lock the jaws. Uh, what else do we need to do? Well, we already got it plugged in, and I love the bed plug in. You don't have to worry about whipping over the tailgate and have that dangle. So it's really good. Now, we don't have to have safety chains. We do have to have the breakaway. And that Why cable... no safety chains? Well, no safety chains is because the lobbying group for the U.S. Semi Association, the Trucking Semi, the Trucking Association, yeah. and the RV Association got together, hired a lobbyist yes. to go to break down any laws that had to do with safety chains on a fifth wheel or even a mini fifth wheel like this has. Okay. The poor horse industry doesn't have enough money. They could. What about what about goosenecks? The working That's what guys. I'm saying. Goosenecks, yeah. which is horse traders, which is commercial. They don't have a lobbying group. So guess what? They have to do safety chains, not that it's uh, any different. Actually, a gooseneck connection is stronger than a kingpin. And if you don't believe me, look at all the truck ratings. Now, now Ram has gotten clear up to 30,000 on a fifth wheel, yeah. but they're still higher rated on a gooseneck. And that's how it is with Ford, Ram, GM. They all do that because they too know that a ball connection is a stronger connection than this kingpin, this mini fifth wheel kingpin connection. But, you know, we don't have a lobby group. Okay, so, so we got the breakaway cable, we got we latched the, uh, the jaw. So let's make a turn and see if it turns. Cool, we got the jacks all the way up. We're on top of things. Give it the beans! Okay, so I've been doing a turning maneuver and yeah. we're at about, what, 45 to 50 degrees now turned and we're studying the situation, right, Mr. Truck? Right, I don't think we're quite 45, but this is what stopped us is the cab to the trailer. Right here. Yeah, right there. And we still had maybe an inch and a half to go, yeah. but you don't want to hit that. This was a Dodge Mega cab would have a big piece here and you wouldn't have seen this. Yes. But and this part here is what I was worried more about, but it's got room. And if you would jackknife in 100, like 45, yeah. you would actually be still outside the bed rail. And this is a long snout on the old kingpin there. Uh, and so I, that's what I was worried about, but you did really well. I know you were kind of concerned if this is all gonna work out, even on this short bed truck, but it did. So do you think I could do a little highway run with this? Certainly, certainly. Okay. And it shows you what a six foot four bed does. You end up getting that close to the cab. But if this would have been a six eight with GM or or six a six ten with GM, yeah. six eight with Ford, you would have had that much more room. Yeah, that would have been a lot better. You gotta remember that about Ram. That short, short bed is not the easiest thing to line up, and you did really well. Well, I don't have another truck right now. This is the truck I have. Well, we don't hurt it driving it with dents. <laughs> So, having this ram short bed is not super ideal because I cannot jackknife completely and make a super tight turn, but at least I can go on a gentle highway drive and get a feeling for it and see how it, how it pulls. Okay, so I set my trailer brakes for heavy electric. 
and so far, you know, the hint is not making much noise. Actually, it's pretty nice. Well, great. What's your gain set at? I'm pretty heavy. I'm at nine. Nine out of ten. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, and I doubt if those brakes have been burnished in. I don't know if they had to transport them here. They might be already burnished in and ready to give you a full break, but I guess you'll find out. You know what, guys? This diesel pull is amazing. I just uh, got up to 65 miles per hour, like no sweat whatsoever. And this has a giant uh, profile. Uh, I believe it's what almost 12 and a half feet tall. I've got three air conditioners on top of the uh, trailer, so it's very massive. And going at a at a highway speed, that could be taxing. So I'm gonna measure my fuel efficiency here. How those mirrors doing? Are they out? You see past that? I'm sure the trailer's eight and a half feet wide. Can you see? Yeah, the mirrors. I flipped up my mirrors. I can see well. I also can. Uh, my convex mirrors are pretty nice. So I can see uh, to the, toward the bottom of the trailer and I'm watching the cab because uh, when making my turns, I want to be I want to be aware of where the trailer is. You know, Mr. Truck, what's kind of remarkable is that how quiet this experience is at speed. You know, I was thinking I would have a lot of wind noise, uh, but everything is kind of behind me and I'm really comfy. You know, you're pulling this for thousands of miles, so you need to be able to be comfortable. Well, Mr. Truck, this video would not be possible without our friends at Complete Trailers. And they have stores in Colorado, Texas, and California. Well, that's cool. They got a lot of nice trailers. I yeah. was walking through the inventory. Now, this is a tall trailer because it's a toy haul. You want good clearance for going on the trails. Now, this is really set up to climb up such a tall trailer. So you got the it's latest got ladder, ladder system. Ladder. Isn't that cool? And I like this because it actually goes to the ground. I know, this is this is a, a Lippert model. This is nice. I would like to have one of these in my toy hauler. Because okay. now I can just run right up there. All right, so jump in there. Ooh, they got beds in here. We should, oh, you got tape measure? we should measure that because that should be 83 inches. That's yeah, nice. and, and also Tracks. look at the length of this floor. Oh, and no. they also built 40 foot and 40 five foot models. Wow, look, a double door refrigerator, No man. way. This is so cool. Look at the cabinets all over, the stove top, the microwave, the stereo, the whatever that is. And TV? It's got, wow, it's got, oh my gosh, a big TV. And up there is where the magic happens. No, no, no. Oh, the first door is where the magic, that's the bathroom, <laughs> the bedroom. Okay, let me show that first. Hold on. So, it's got the restroom in here. There's a little skylight vent and then a very large bedroom. Yeah, Mr. Truck, this is nice. Oh yeah, and you stand it up, you're what, six foot 20? <laughs> Almost six three, my friend. Look at that, so you can go up there and just rub your, barely rub your hair, that's nice. It's yeah. nice to be able to walk around your bed. A lot of these horse traders, you have to crawl around the bed. Yeah. But this is nice. Okay, so uh, here you go. Look at this control panel. Um, Isn't that cool? Ooh. Big control panel. Hull light. I'm afraid we probably there's no need, generator, so it must we be probably need uh, shore power. Shore power. There's how you level out your jacks. That's nice. It's all automatic. Levels Equalizer system. That's a good system. And you've got uh, cabinetry, of a course. A lot of cabinets you need. And okay. it's got, you know, beds and sofas and tables and everything else. And this is wide. This is like what my car trader is, 83 inch between fenders. So you can put a full size, well, a short pickup in here. Yeah. <laughs> or okay. a Jeep. So no, it's right. nice. Well, let's, let's measure. Gross vehicle weight rating on this trailer is 16,800. And payload is 7,458. And it's enabled by the rear fold down door. So really I can open these latches and reveal. And actually these doors are actually very heavy duty. Yeah, they got big springs on. This is nice. It's got a rough surface, kind of like a bed liner in the door. 
So let me show that. Uh, because you need to have a sturdy door to drive a Jeep or something on well, top of true. it. Well, that's true. And hopefully this bed goes up a little further. It does. Okay, it looks like uh, 80, 80 and 3 quarters. So it's not 83. 80 and 3 quarters between the... Yeah. But the track of your vehicle might be less than that. That's true. That's true. I do 83 to barely get all my big tires on, but that's true. But the beds are still about 80 and 3 quarter. Can we measure the length from this uh, refridge to the back? Well, that's a good idea. 14 and a half feet, 14 foot, six inches. Okay, so that's pretty good uh, length for a side-by-side -side or something like that. If you want yeah. something bigger. A Jeep, maybe a Maverick. Well, if, if you want something bigger, get the longer trailer. And whenever we need to fuel up, we use Sinclair stations. They have DynaCare in all grades of their fuels and also you can use the DinoPay app to get some money off your fuel which is really important these days pulling trailers and uh, using lots of fuel that's why we're thankful for Sinclair go after about 40 miles on the highway at 70 miles an hour I averaged 8.9 mpg according to the computer and last time when Mr. Truck and I did a comparison with the exact same truck towing a black series bumper pull trailer camping trailer behind us we got 10.9 so when you increase the size of your trailer make it taller and bigger yes you will be less efficient by a significant margin about about 2 mpg you know my, my problem, right? You have a problem. I, I have a big head. It's mostly empty. And I, I've been trying to find a cowboy hat for years. Years. And finally wow. here at the truck stop, there's a hat that's big enough for me. This is good. This is good. And and um, it was on sale. Are you going to get a pony now? <laughs> Maybe a bull or two? Yeah. How about we weigh the truck? That'd be a good idea. I know exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Because sure. I also want to see the distribution of the weight. So yeah. we know... Because these axles are a little bit of a spreader axle, you can, so yeah. these are supposed to have a little bit of weight distribution because they're what, further apart. Yes. And these aren't a long ways apart, so they're nothing you know big, but the horse care companies are starting to do all that too. First way, reway. First way. Truck number. Truck number two. Uh, we got the weight slip, uh, gross weight of truck and trailer plus a driver is 19,100. The trailer axle is at 8,000, which means the truck with the driver is about 11,000. Wow, just a little heavy. <laughs> We're a little bit overloaded. Yeah, just a little. So, uh, bottom line, what we learned here is uh, the truck with the tongue weight, with the fifth wheel hitch and everything else about 11,000 and the gross vehicle weight rating on this truck is 10,000 so what we learned is get a one-ton truck <laughs> right yeah but this is this trailer is not that big of a trailer it's, no it's 16,000 loaded that's too bad if they screw up your tongue weights so you can't take advantage of what this can tow at 20,000 that's just sad exactly so this truck is payload limited so what I would recommend either get an eight-foot bed 3,500 right right or um, you can get also some other brands like Ford and GM trucks, right? Yeah, that's just sad that you got to get a dually to pull a small trailer like this. I mean, it looks massive, and, yeah. but, but if your maximum weight is 16 on it and you can't even do that, increase the payload, you OEMs. There's something wrong, something fishy's going on here. And Mr. Chuck, where should people go for some truck accessories? Well, I'll tell you where they should go. They should go to mrtruck.com by the truck and trailer accessories I use every week on new truck reviews. And now I'm at a local agricultural scale for trucks. And I wanted to show you what the truck, the Ram weighs by itself with a driver in it. And that's precisely 8,300 pounds. So actually it turns out the trailer is pushing down on the truck with about, what, 1,700 pounds? 
Yeah, that's a lot of tongue weight on an empty toy hauler. Oh yeah, I also promised you the price on this Game Changer trailer. Well, it's August in Colorado, there's a sale going on. It's currently available at $131,000 for this uh, Pro Series toy hauler trailer, 36 footer. But as you saw, it's extremely well built. Aluminum frame, super, super heavy duty and it pulls wonderfully behind this Ram truck. Super stable, super comfy, and the hitch, the hitches work great today. So uh, that's the price, 131K. Well guys, I learned a lot during this video. First, you have to be very mindful of the payload on your truck, as we've showed you in this video. Also, of course, the fuel efficiency will go down. Um, if I was to tow such a trailer with this truck, uh, I would, of course, put the toy behind so to maybe equalize the weight a little bit, take some tongue weight off the bed of the truck, um, equalize the weight a little bit, but after everything is said and done, I would recommend getting a Ram 3500 single rear wheel with a longer bed for this job. This 2500 truck, it's a little bit outmatched by a toy hauler like this. As always, check out alttfl.com and of course, mrtruck.com can't thank you for your help in this video as always thank you guys very much